Hello YouTubers and welcome to this next video in this series about STM32 development. Um, I have on several occasions mentioned that I don't particularly like the Arduino IDE and one of the reasons why I don't like that IDE is the fact that it doesn't have any debugging features. So today we will be covering or introducing, we won't touch, we won't get very deep, but we'll look at how you can debug your applications um, in STM32 Cube IDE. As usual, I keep my workspace in sync with GitHub. Uh, so the first thing I always do when I start, start working is to do a JIT pull to make sure my local clone is up to date with the repository which we see here. So right now this JIT repository is synchronized with my workspace. So let's look at the application we developed uh, last time, uh, which is basically looping around in the central loop and then every 500 milliseconds it toggles a GPIO, uh, print a statement and toggle the GPIO and every one second it prints another statement and um, that's about it. So let's see how that works. Uh, down here we have the microcom and let's try to do a flashing and you will see it starts blink 2 and it toggles the GPIO two times every time it prints out one of those ticks. Now let's add a little more uh, work here so we actually have something to debug. First of all I don't really, it, this tick comes every second so we can divide by a thousand. Uh, I also want to keep track of how many times does it actually go around this loop every time it prints a statement and we can do that by introducing a uh, if I could use my keyboard we can include a loop count variable which we increase once every time it goes through the loop and then when we print the statement we can add We can add loop count equals that and then over here loop CNC and then we have to remember to reset that loop count every time it goes through. So let's try to see how that looks. So now you'll see that it actually writes the number of seconds, not milliseconds, that the MCU has been running and how many times it actually went through that loop. Um, and that is about 2.6 million times. So the loop is executed 2.1 million times every time it prints out one of those st uh, statements. So basically a million and something uh, between the toggles of the GPIO. There we go. So, how does debugging work? Well, debugging, it's basically if we go back and look at the, the data sheet of the uh, STM32F 411, which is the one we're using. Uh, a bit down we have the block diagram. There it was. Let's zoom in on this a bit. You'll see that the STM32 have the ARM core, which is where everything is executed, but connected to that ARM core is the JTAG or debugging uh, module uh, or whatever they call it. I don't know. So Basically, when you're running the debugging, it doesn't affect the uh, course execution. All the debugging is done in a separate module that has the ability to control the core. So it can stop the core, it can pause the core, it can modify stuff in the core. Uh, all very, very clever. 
So let's remove the video there and uh, let's fire up the debugger. You have seen me on several occasions execute the application by flashing and it gets executed here. Uh, but if we want to debug, what we do is we click on this icon, debug the application. So if we click on this, the execution will start as normal. It will flash, it will start, and then it will halt the execution at the first instruction in the main loop. So this is down here. Right now, the application is not running. We can look at our video. The LED is not flashing and the instructions have halted. We can look at the output. It started the blink. No, it actually didn't. It hasn't actually reached that yet. But let's try to um, step through the application. We have the ability to either step over an instruction or step into. So if we, uh, right now, the next instruction that needs to be executed is the hell in it. And if we click F5, it will dive into hell in it and it will show, okay, so we are in hell in it here and we can single step through the instructions by clicking F6, uh, pressing F6, and then we return and continue with the next instruction. So we can single step. So notice this, at the moment it has not printed anything that is from the old execution. But if we execute this, F6, it will actually print out that statement. Now it is possible to restart the running. So right now it's halted. You can see that up here that is actually you can resume or you can terminate the debugging. It's actually not terminating the application, it's terminating the debugging. So if we click resume here, you'll see that, and let's show the video there. Now the execution is running normally and the printout at any point in time, we can pause the execution click pause suspend sorry so it's suspended right at this location and you will see that nothing is printed out and the led is no longer blinking uh, an interesting feature here is that the moment we stop this execution over here you can see the local variable in the function where the execution was stopped so right at this moment in time, now was 19,485, and the last blink was 19,000, So and the last tick was 19,000. So in a few milliseconds, it will actually execute the this one up here. Now, that can be very useful, but it can also be very confusion, uh, confusing. Uh, an interesting feature is you can add breakpoints. So we can add a breakpoint, for example, there, and we can add, ah, uh, let's wait, let's do it here. So we add a breakpoint there, and we can add a breakpoint there. So now if we continue the execution, it will stop the first time it reaches one of those um one of those um places so let's so it stopped here and you can see that now was 19500 so it and uh, last blink was 19000 so this was equal to 500 therefore it executed this now if we continue it ends up now at 20,000. But you'll notice that if I continue now, it will also dive into this one because now is 20,000 now. So it will, there, it will execute. So that is the way you can basically stop the execution. So if you have 
some code that you are uncertain about, you put in a breakpoint at the beginning of that and you can single step through that. Uh, in the run menu you can um, remove all breakpoints in one go. Let's do that and let's say we want to look at this part. We can add a breakpoint here, run until it reaches that breakpoint and then we can single step to our function by pre pressing F6 and you can see the variables getting updated over here. Now that is of course a very very powerful uh, functionality to find mistakes or errors in your code. Another interesting feature is that you can monitor oh let's sorry I stopped it I shouldn't have Yeah, let's uh, continue this again. Remember uh, our get tick function? The way that worked is it returns a global variable called uv tick, uw tick. Let's copy that and uh, we have this tab over here called live expression and we can add a live expression. We can add uv tick and then we Remove all breakpoints. We don't want this to stop now. So remove all breakpoints. Remove. And then we continue the execution. So now the application is running normally. Turns out. But over here we follow the UV tick live while it is executing. Uh, I don't know the maximum speed of how, how fast you can get these up. Uh, as far as I know, you can only monitor global variables um, in this. So otherwise it will be over here in the variable. And if we pause, it will show. Uh, I, let's put a breakpoint here instead. Talk a breakpoint. Continue. It will show the variables of the function that is currently executing. If it goes to another function, it will show the variables of that function, the local variables of that function. So that is a basic introduction to the debugger in uh, STM32 CubeIDE and STM32 MCUs. There are a lot of other features, uh, but I think this video is getting long enough so we will cover that in a future video uh, as usual when i am done with whatever i'm doing i add everything to it i commit everything I'm not very good at writing debug GitHub messages, but never mind. And I push this to GitHub. So next time I will continue from here. As usual, no, actually not as usual since I never done this before. But if you got this far, please, please, please like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, it really helps me a lot because it, it uh, eventually I might actually get to a point where I can get some ads on this. Uh, but let's see. Right now I think I got about eight followers. So it's not much right now. Enjoy. Have a nice time.